Well, today we're going to be talking about Neville Goddard's ease dropping technique. So what we're going to do is go to a presentation that we already have prepared, and we'll discuss this presentation and how to use Neville Goddard's ease dropping technique. So as you see, we have, like I said, we have a document here, and again, it's called the uh, ease dropping technique or the ease drop technique. And so a lot of times when we're trying to manifest, sometimes we have problem getting into state or manifesting what it is that we desire simply because lack of technique. So this technique is actually perfect for those who sometimes want to hear somebody else congratulating them on a job well done or that promotion or that new relationship or even more money, you know, just hearing somebody congratulate you or also even hearing somebody hate on you and talking behind your back. But all of these things work to solidify what it is that you want to manifest in your life. So let's talk about it. Hear people talking behind your back as they're saying great things, imagine it. So begin to imagine people talking about you and the success that you desire, whatever that success may be. Hear people talking to you about that success and talking about you concerning that success. Take a simple scene. Some would, someone would congratulate you as if they heard you had uh, good fortune. Then allow them to say so and accept their congratulations. Just as if you would, if they had come to you in the flesh or in person. Now remain faithful is what he says, you know. So, and remember to remain faithful in this whole process to your vision. If you need more complex scenes, then act like Two people are gotten together, they're talking behind your back, and they're discussing your good fortune. Hear them talking about you and hear them talk about how happy they are for you. Sometimes, like I said, you may even have somebody who's hating on you that may not be so happy for your good fortune, as it were. But feel that. Feel it real. So when you're hearing them talking about you, because you're really going to get both sides of the coin, you're going to have people that are happy for you, but you're going to also receive those who are haters. So as you solidify the feeling of these people talking about you, then of course, it becomes real to you. So really get into it, really just sense people talking behind your back and congratulating you and talking about uh, how glad they are for you. But also, like I said, see the contrary, see people that are hating on you. You know, those people that may hate on you for your successes and so forth. So kind of see them hating on you and you really feeling what it feels like to feel that thing real. Now understand, subconscious mind can't tell the difference between what you're imagining and the actual manifestation of that event. Listen to their words and praise or envy, then do not forget that vision. Conjure in your mind and carry it with you, knowing that what it implies will come to pass, for it is potency is not the scene itself, but the scene, what the scene implies. So the power isn't in the scene itself, but what the scene implies at a subconscious level. When you're manifesting these things, it's not always per se the vision that you have, but you're feeling about the vision, you're five sensing, smelling, tasting, touching, you know, emotionalizing, feeling this thing real in your life. So say that the event that you're looking for is more money. Feel more money as being real to you. We've all had times where we've had money. Grab hold of one of those feelings when you've had more money and how good you feel. You know, Mr. Linda will often say, you know, one of the things that we receive from that, and Neville has also said it, the feeling of relief. You know, sometimes when you have a bill due and all of a sudden you come into money or somebody loans you money, you, know, you feel relieved that that bill can be paid. So find yourself feeling relieved, you know, of having that new fortune that you have in your life. Get into the feeling of it and just know that it's actually coming to pass. I want to talk about a story in the Bible. And this is the story of Gideon. And Gideon was an Israelite. And they were so deprived by the tribes around them, they had been overtaken by the Midians and the Amicites and so forth. And so they started settling in the valleys, in the villages around Israel. And so Gideon himself began to 
hide in the wine press. And, you know, they started, you know, uh, thrashing wheat and hiding their food so that their enemies wouldn't take the food. And so one day Gideon had a vision and the vision was that God was going to protect them. And so what he did was tore down the idols of his father. Now we're talking about the idols. We're talking about those things that we trust outside of ourselves. You know, we know that we are the creators, but when we begin looking outside of ourselves for help, as it were, and I'm not saying seeking help is wrong, but what I'm saying is when you forget that you are the only creator in your world and you forfeit that by seeking only help from without, you've given your power away. So Gideon had given his power away, but the spirit of the Lord had rose up in him. I always like to say that the Lord is the law of right decree. Where are you decreeing about your day, creators? So the spirit of the Lord rose up in Gideon. And when that spirit of the Lord rose up in him, Gideon became bold. And he began to see himself as this leader in Israel. And so he and one of his companions basically went into the camp of the Midianites. And two of the Midianite soldiers were talking. And they said, you know, once that I had this dream, and the dream was, you know, that this barley loaf of bread came tumbling down and all the Midian camp was destroyed. And the other soldier said that was nothing more than the sword of Gideon. The Lord's going to give him victory. Now, this was Gideon eavesdropping, hearing somebody saying that he was going to be successful in his campaign. So whatever it is that you're trying to do, see yourself being successful in your campaign. As you see yourself being successful in your campaign and you begin living from that success, your success is certain. Now, don't give up because it doesn't come as quickly as you think that it should. You have to persevere knowing that the thing that you desire will in fact be manifested in your world and also outpictured into your reality. Now I want to share with you a story that was told by Neville concerning a young man who left college and he found himself unemployed and he started hanging out with a band of gypsies. And it says, he could tell you a number of stories of the power of imagination, but he wants to tell this one about Joseph Blanco, which was a very popular story in that time, but it was also known to be a true story. He went to Oxford University and found himself, like I said, without funds and without a job. So he started hanging out with this band of gypsies. One day while he was hanging out with this band of gypsies, two of his former classmates saw him and he kind of signaled to them, you know, don't say anything and I'll talk to you later. So when they pulled him to the side, they said, you know, what's going on? Why are you with this uh, band of gypsies? You know, what's going on with you? Have you lost your mind? You know, he said, listen. I'll tell you everything shortly, but what I need for you to do is just meet me at this location, and what I will do is tell you everything in full at that point. So the two friends went away, and they met Joseph later, and Joseph told them pretty much everything that they said in their conversation, and so he says, this is the secret of gypsies, and he said, what I did was you thought that you were coming up with this conversation on your own, but I started mentally telling you, feeding you the script that I wanted you guys to talk about. And so in turn, you guys were talking about what it was that I had desired for you to talk about. So now, how does this apply to us in the eavesdropping technique? When we begin seeing others talk about us, congratulate us, what we're doing is solidifying locking in, making real that thing that we want to manifest in our realities. So say it's a better relationship, say it's better health, say it's more money. Whatever your desire is, you must begin seeing others congratulating you about your good fortune, your improved health, your loving relationship. Whatever that thing is that you want to manifest, you must see it real and begin living from that state. Now, many people say, well, you know, coach, I have a very difficult time in seeing it real. Most of that's because we've been talked out of 
using our imagination from childhood. You know, when children begun to imagine, you know, their parents said, you know, stop daydreaming, you know, get busy, start working. And so we've talked them out of their imagination, you know, things that they used to be in wonder about. Oh, that's make believe, that's fake, you know, don't believe that stuff. And so pretty soon we become adults and we become disillusioned and we no longer believe in you know, the power of the mind, the power of the subconscious mind, the power of pretend, make believe, acting as if. And we say that's just a bunch of hogwash, whatever the story is that we're telling ourselves. But scriptures, as well as science, tells us now that, for example, in quantum mechanics, if they don't do a double blind experiment, what happens is the experiment is tainted by the person that is aware of what's happening in the experiment. So everybody that's participating in the experiment must not be aware of what's taking place. Otherwise, their thoughts, their imagination can taint the experiment. So what is that saying to you? That there is no fiction. What we call make-believe is thought in action. And this is why we can see somebody taking whatever it was that they thought about and turn it into a wonderful movie. The funny thing about that wonderful movie, such as the book, The Titanic, you know, Neville talks about this, saying that somebody had wrote a book prior to that about the same type of story, about the same type of ocean liner that sinks in pretty much the exact same way that the Titanic had sunk. Or he talks about Rod Sterling and Rod Sterling talking about this um, hijack, you know, aboard a plane. And then, of course, somebody takes that story and they hijack a plane using the same techniques that were told in the Twilight Zone movie. So what we have to do is be mindful of the stories that we're telling ourselves. So why not think of a story that's of lovely and of a good report as opposed to the contrary? Many of us say, well, you know, that's just not being realistic, coach. There's nothing being more realistic than controlling your thinking. But as you begin to control your thinking and be mindful of the things that you're giving your attention to, your world's going to be transformed. And understand, I'm just not talking to you from, you know, just hearsay. These things I've experienced in my own life when I was making little to no money. And all of a sudden, I was able to turn that into a six-figure income and later on into millions through relationships and things that had transpired in my own life. So what I'm saying to you, creators, is that you can have the life that you desire. You can have the house, the car. But see, all those things are small things compared to the person that can control his or her own thinking. When you can control your thinking and the direction of your thinking, you control your world. But the funny thing is because you're going to be the minority, you're going to be able to control the environment of others who are less inclined to control their thinking and think haphazardly. As you begin to think more focused, you're going to have an advantage, as it were, over everyone else. Because, of course, most people don't even believe that these laws, these principles have any credence, and they write it off as science fiction. And because of that, They have no power in their world, and their world is controlled by everything on the without, whether it be the president, the government, you know, the job, the employer, the boss, you know, the economy. All these things are controlling their world, their environment. But when you begin to understand that you are the controller of your world and you begin practicing techniques such as eavesdropping, for example, you will, in fact, transform your world. Listen, creators. Only you can create your perfect world, not God or man. Only you can create your perfect world. This is Coach DeCarlo saying have a great and abundant day. Take what you have learned and begin to transform your world from the inside out. Now, just because it doesn't happen in a moment, don't say, well, these techniques don't work. This stuff is a bunch of, you know, whatever, you know, BS, whatever you're going to say. But begin making your life an experiment. And begin practicing little by little as you look at going to the store, as you look at interacting with people in your relationships. Use these principles and see if they work for you. If you lose nothing, if you try them and they don't work. But I assure you, creators, the science of the mind, the laws of the mind are at work. 
whether we understand how they work. I don't have to understand electricity and how electricity works to power on my lights and turn off my lights and you know get food out of the refrigerator or power up my car. I don't need to understand all the idiosyncrasies and the little things that take place in order for those things to work. I just know that they work because I'm applying the law. I turn on the ignition, the car turns on, unless of course there's something wrong with the car. You know, I turn on the light switch and the power comes on. And of course, unless I've turned off the power. So as long as you're connected to your source, these things are going to work. The thing is, are you using them to your benefit and to your advantage? This is Coach DiCarlo saying have a great and abundant day.